let's actually look at the acceleration field a little bit more in depth. In previous videos we've learned that we can figure out the acceleration field from the velocity, from the given velocity field. Now let's figure out once we get an acceleration field let's find the components of that acceleration field. So let's find the x component, the y component, and the z component of an acceleration field. And we know our old formula, our old acceleration formula, that's equal to uh, dv dt, right? And that's equal to the partial of the velocity function in respect to time plus v of x, the partial of v in respect to x plus uh, v of y times the partial of the velocity in respect to y plus uh, v of z of the partial of the velocity in respect to z. That's, that's, that's our old acceleration formula. In component form, in component form, a of x, a of y, and a of z we can figure out A of X, or the X component of this acceleration field, by using the partials of um, the X velocity. And we can use, um, we'll, we'll, we'll use the partials of the X component of the velocity to find the, the uh, X components of the acceleration. So, that, so AX is equal to the partial of VX in respect to time plus V of X times the partial of the X velocity component in respect to X plus V of Y, the partial of VX in respect to Y plus V of Z um, times the partial of v of x in respect to z. So notice how we're using v of x in each one of these partials. And we take those partials in respect to x, y, and z just for the x component of the velocity field. Okay, same thing for a of y, but this time we're using the y components of the velocity field. So it's the partial of uh, v of y in respect to t plus v of x times the partial of vy with respect to x plus uh, v of y times the partial of v of y in respect to y plus v of z times the partial of v of y in respect to z. Uh, same thing for the z component of the acceleration. It's the partial of v of z in respect to time plus v of x times the partial of v of z in respect to x plus v of y times the partial of v of z in respect to y plus v of uh, z times the partial of v of z in respect to Oops, Z. Okay? So for the X, we use the X components of the velocity field. For A of Y, we use the Y components of the velocity field. And for A of Z, we use the Z components of the velocity field. A quick example a velocity field. Let me use a different color. Uh, yeah. Um, a velocity field, let me center that, a velocity field is given by xi plus x squared zj plus yzk. That's our velocity field. Our v of x, v of y, and v of z respectively are equal to x, x squared z, and uh, y, y, z, okay? And notice that this is actually a steady flow because the velocity field doesn't depend on time. 
So we can automatically, automatically say the partials of each of these components in respect to time are all zero, so we don't have to worry about any of these components. So we can say the partial of the velocity field in respect to time is equal to zero. Right? This automatically makes all these three equal to zero. So, really, our a of x, we, we just plug it in. Well, let's plug in um, a of x. So, we'll do the first one a little slow. So, a of x, a of x, this is 0. v of x, well, v of x is x times the partial of v of x in respect to x. And that would be 1, right? We're taking the partial of this in respect to x, and that's just 1. Okay? Plus our b of y, which is x squared z, times the partial of x in respect to y. Remember, we're only looking at v of x for our a of x. We take that, we take the partial of that in respect to y, well, that's zero. There's no y there. It's just zero. You probably guess the last one, v of z, which is yz times, well, zero again. Why? Because the partial of v of x in respect to z, the partial of v of x in respect to z is zero. And that gives me just x. Same thing for the y component, we'll get uh, v of x, which is x, times the partial of vy in respect to x, and vy in respect to x is 2xz, plus x squared z times 0, y, well, partial of y, or v of y, which is x squared, oops, x squared, z, times a partial of vy in respect to y. Well, the partial of vy in respect to y is just zero. There's no y term here. So that's zero. Plus, we can say uh, yz times x squared. And that gives me 2x squared, uh, 2x squared plus x squared y z. Okay? A of z, let's do that really quick. It'd be x times 0, right? v of x, which is x, times a partial of z in respect to x, the partial of z, or v of z in respect to x, which is 0 plus x squared z, right, which is the v of y term, times the partial of z, v of z in respect to y. So the partial of v of z in respect to y is just z, plus yz, which is the v of z term, v of z here is yz, times the partial of vz in respect to z. So if we took the partial of this in respect to z, we'd get y. And that, that gives me x squared z squared plus y squared z. So there you have it. The three components of the acceleration field depend on the three components of the velocity field. And we can find the three different acceleration field components using this big, massive box. Okay?